had that same thought going through my head. What would happen if I gave it my everything? If for once I gave myself an actual chance to try and follow the path that my intuition is telling me to. To give myself the time, I need to become something that makes me smile. Even when that seems so unimportant next to all the hardships life brings to you. I've been in this place quite a few times in my life, but this time is different because for the first time I'll try to separate me and my dreams from situations happening around me that tend to get through me, living in their way out seeds of doubt and fear and believe that trying to be an artist and create cannot provide what I need to help my family and me. This is my slow life reset in the middle of the year in hopes to clear my thoughts and in some way help you do the same. I made the decision to prioritize having a healthier working routine and space, which is quite hard when your work life is like a half meter away from your bed. Right now I'm in a place where I try to let go of everything that I thought I knew about creating and being an artist. How I want to create from now on and what. I don't want to call it figuring out a new strategy, but I do need to study why some things are working, keep notes and find out how all these translate to me and my passions. We all grow so much each year and it's okay to admit that some things that have worked before and make you feel safe in choosing them again don't align with your thoughts and who you are now. It makes you afraid to change your ways because the new ones not only might not work, but they might make you lose everything that you have built, especially if your work is related to social media. Another little monster that I'm trying to tackle down is my lack of consistency. Our well-known nemesis and the one thing that if we all try to tackle down in anything we do, so many things will make sense and so many answers will appear. Especially now with how fast-paced everything is, if you don't show up for yourself again and again, you will never catch up and experience that moment in the future that what you are doing now has finally worked. To help with that beast, I got back into journaling and planning. Nothing a good old bullet journal cannot solve. <laughs> I mean, it is already such a breath of fresh air. I know when I am too stuck in life and frozen, when I no longer need to let my thoughts out and ideas out of my head because I am too stuck to even have any. So for me to get back into journaling was such a huge step. I started by figuring out how to win this little beast and taking seriously my posting schedule. I need to know what being consistent would look like in my week or month. I tried to see what Google said about posting hours and analytics, if any of these actually are true. I really don't know about the perfectionist in me, just had to do the research and combine all the analytics and everything, all the data I found into one calendar. I worked on having a daily routine of planning a week ahead of me with tasks and habit tracking and all the good stuff about bullet journaling. I'm using one of my undated monthly planners I have created like last year for my Patreons and then on August I'll be starting to share all the new monthly setups that I will be using from now on. So if you're actually interested to check them out, I will have my Patreon where I will also be uploading from now on most of my art tutorials and my art making process for all of you who are focused on improving your art. So if you would like to support me and be part of the Patreon community where I will be posting all the journal kits and all the art classes, I will have the link in the description box down below. Having a planning routine is honestly what gets me through right now. I am still going between calendars and notes or reminders and just using apps that feel helpful at this moment until I figure out a system that works with me and when I do, I will definitely let you know. But my advice for now is to just get started, try journaling, even if it's just some list in a white paper and have a place for your thoughts that is not in your head and slowly things will take shape.
you might have noticed the elephant in the room. I got a new monitor and I have a full iPad only desk setup. Something that completely changed my working experience and most importantly, I'm going to trust and respect my work as much as I would if I was working for someone else. I have been thinking whether a monitor is something I truly needed and have been torturing myself not to spend that money because as an artist creator, the monitor I would choose couldn't be super cheap. But I cannot tell you how stupid I was for not doing it earlier. And this decision came after realizing that I will finally give myself the chance to fully and completely follow my instinct for my career and dreams. Now, let me introduce you to my duo besties combo, the well-known hero of my life, the iPad Pro, and the monitor that I got to pair it with and just have the best iPad desk setup that doesn't break my bank. I cannot stop telling everyone how I use the iPad Pro for everything in my life, from drawing and illustrating to planning and scripting work and daily life, even creating digital products and now even fully editing my videos. Not only significantly improved my posture and reduced eye strain, but now I have a docked version that puts me in the mentality that my work, what I'm trying to accomplish inside my bedroom is just as important as a 9 to 5 job. Honestly, I haven't opened my laptop for a while now, I have a huge noise issue with it, the fans go crazy and it is impossible to do any work without having headphones on. But this whole process and just feeling of resetting made me want to just appreciate what I already have and remind myself it is more than enough to get me even further in my goals and dreams. Because while you try to find solutions in your life, you just keep seeing all the things that don't work and you think you need new ones. So I focused on what was really missing for me to start this new journey in my work and it was obvious how hard it was for me to be on my desk working all day, being in front of a small screen, looking down, having neck pain. So I got the monitor, I reset my laptop PC in order to also use it with my bigger screen and just now have a complete and much healthier working space. I even gave the iPad a little makeover. I refreshed the paper-like protector I had on since I bought it two years ago. It had lost its paper-like feeling and grip that is really helpful when creating art and just using the Apple Pencil. You can see how scratched up the screen protector was and the beat-up case I'm always using. Both of them have managed to keep my iPad looking brand new, but yeah, let's just change it up. The paper-like came with two screen protectors, so I just had the second one already and that I bought a new really nice deep green case. This one has a hard plastic bag that I'm not sure I will be enjoying having to snap the corners every time I take it out because I'm using my iPad every day changing it between portable and desk setup. Yeah, I will see how this will go. It was a bit hard getting all the glue out of the previous one. I got a bit obsessed with the corners but had so much fun and satisfaction. Yeah, I'm a little nerdy when it comes to stuff like this. They are part of why I love creating and tech and all that stuff. And it almost feels like I got a new iPad. I mean, look at this. In my surprise, I had another perfect screen protector application in all the two times I have done it in my life. After having such a refreshing moment with my working space and the mentality I want to follow for my work from now on, it was so nice to get back to work and back to replying emails and having the chance to create more and collaborate with brands and have moments like this. So this is me unboxing some really cool stuff from Stationery Pal while I continue my story. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ludwig. Ich All these decisions about how I want to approach my work from now on and how I need to build a healthy relationship with my time and working space have brought back so much inspiration to me and actually have happened because I have reached the bottom. And it feels kind of strange to say because at the same time I was reaching 100k subscribers here on YouTube and it was such a huge milestone but in reality i was so down that i couldn't bring myself up to create film or paint so i decided to search for a job an actual job that doesn't have to do with any of these that i was working something that i wouldn't be the starting force something that i could just be there every day to get me going and i found one and actually a really good one i had the opportunity to work for a tv channel here in greece and it was such an amazing experience meeting great talented people being in the control room seeing next level equipment and behind the scenes of daily television production But most importantly, for once in my life, I had to show up every day, no matter my feelings and my mood or what was happening, because I had to be there to do my work. I was part of the team and I didn't want to let anyone down. And this was such a huge awakening, because even though I found it very interesting to be there and learn so much about production, I realized I was no longer here. I thought after a few weeks I would be able to do both, but it wasn't actually possible. After all those long hours at work to come back and film and paint, actually I couldn't even film because I was getting back home at night, and realized in my whole process of trying to not let everyone else down, the people I was working with, my family, I have been letting down myself all these years by not letting aside anything that stopped me from showing up for my work and my dreams, for letting myself down, for not just chasing what I was feeling it was right for me. And not gonna lie, I have been through some really tough times that I know they were a legit reason why I was feeling this down and I had to go through all this. But it was just the moment that I realized that from now on, I don't want to let myself down and feel again so sad and so empty. So I quit. It was easier for me to kind of wake up because I still had your daily comments and support. I had brand emails wanting to work with me and collaborate, waiting for me to just start creating again. All these things that my sadness didn't let me enjoy and appreciate before because I didn't feel like I was enough. I was so stuck and still am, don't get me wrong. This is a big road ahead of me, but for once I give credit to myself for how far I've come. If I did all this without giving it my all, then the possibility of what could happen if I really tried for once makes me feel so full of life. So this is where I was. Growing up in an environment where I was given so much love but we always had so little makes it so tough because my mom is always so strong telling us to never give up on what we dream and what we want and trying to provide us a better future but at the same time we just have to do what we can to bring quick help and money to get through and trying to build a career and life like the one I am dreaming as an artist is not something that you can do quickly. It needs so much patience and unpaid hours of hard work. So I was constantly feeling like I am fighting between these two worlds and it just made me feel I don't have a choice and that my life is not my own. Somewhere along the way I had a few glimpses of motivation and sparks of energy meeting people but it was incredible how quickly I would fall down again. Cause the main source of my sadness was and still is here. And not to get too much into detail about that but mainly trying to help your loved ones through really tough situations can completely consume you. 
So what did I do? Honestly, what helped the most is probably just letting everything happen and live through it, but always having someone by your side to remind you how amazing you are. Not forgetting how strong you can be, showing you over and over again everything you have accomplished, even in your toughest times. Letting you almost quit, because they know if you don't see it for yourself, no matter what they say, it cannot help you. But they are always around the corner so you don't actually quit. This was everything. I had lost my spark and joy of being me, but nothing can take away your mind, your thoughts. What was once yours will always be yours. Your creativity, your passions will always find a way to come up in the surface. This has been happening for almost all the years I'm here on YouTube and you can probably guess it from the lack of my consistency and me posting randomly, but this year I have changed a lot. I slowly started to make decisions. It didn't matter if they were right or wrong. It was whatever I felt, but at least I was doing something. Like the job I found and then I quit. So this is me trying to find me. Be here for my loved ones, but not try to apologize for try to heal me first. I am still very afraid, believing I lost my chance. I am here right now, giving myself the chance to fully try this out, to be dedicated, not to give up on my dreams for something that looks more stable or safe. No, I haven't figured out everything, just that I want to create and just feel happy and smile with what I am sharing with you and what I am just doing with my passions. And I just want to be fair to myself and give this an honest try. Thank you so much. If you listen till the end, it's just crazy to know that I have people like you out there supporting and just being here. It really makes me want to be so much better and I cannot even describe how thankful I am to have you here. I would love to know how you're doing and where you are in your path. Let me know and till the next time, have a super duper day. Bye! Κρατήστε μου! Κρατήστε μου!